and welcome to this edition of Campus Connection for Summer 2010. I'm Andy Garcia. And I'm Tanya Larson. On today's show, we'll be talking about campus safety and gang violence in Long Beach. We'll also take a look into fashion at the beach and graduates and the job market. But first, CSULB celebrates its diversity. Jacqueline Aguirre has the story. Dancing. Food. And fashion are just some of the things highlighting this year's multicultural show at Cal State Long Beach. Hosted by the University's International Student Association, tonight is a 44 show themed Yesterday, Today, and Tomorrow. To us, it's a continuation of supporting international students who have you know, come from various countries to study here at Long Beach, whether they're here for their degree or they're just here for a semester or a year-long exchange. So it's, it's allowing everybody to have a chance to experience American culture. ISC students and volunteers each took turns modeling designs from different cultures around the world, including India, Vietnam, Korea, and Colombia. Each piece representing a nation to students on campus and to many of those in the audience. Oh, there's just an amazing array of people in the audience tonight. Oh, um, Indians, Sri Lankans, um, Vietnamese, Asian, um, obviously we're all Asians, um, German, Swedish, Colombian, just a, an array of different students. The International Peace Choir performed hits like It's a Small World and Peace on Earth for the audience as part of the underlining theme of peace that ISA hopes the show will promote. I really loved it. Small kids and uh, older ones and their courage to sing in front of so many of us and they sang for almost half an hour. Guests also had the chance to sample international food at the Lebanese themed buffet. Dishes like baklava, tabbouleh, and shawarma were among those served at the event. Besides being both culturally and deliciously entertaining, students say they're leaving feeling more informed and feel lucky to have a university that promotes multicultural awareness. For Campus Connection, I'm Jacqueline Aguirre. Thanks, Jackie. It's great to see how different cultures can be expressed through food and fashion. As spring semester comes to an end, summer approaches the beach with waves of hot new fashion. Gretchen Gerada has your fashion first at the beach. While some students attend summer session, others will bask in the sun at the beach. But what about those that will do both? What are you going to sport in the sun? I like to wear dresses or shorts. Typical tank top with jean skirt or shorts and flip flops. The swim trunks for sure. Maybe a hat to uh, you know block the sun, some sunglasses. I gotta wear sandals, trunks, and really like a, a wife beater. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Dark fall inspired hues are out this summer. A bright upgrade from spring's pastels will make heads turn. Yes men, you too. We're seeing a lot of brights. Um, we're seeing corals and teals, hot pinks. Those are all very popular right now. Like many summers past, every year has its new beach trends. One of the biggest trends that we're seeing right now is the scrunched bottom. So in the bikinis, we're seeing a lot of the rouging, and it's really flattering um, on the bottom. And we're also seeing a lot of um, more like lingerie styles with the lace. And they're, they're a little bit funky, and it's for a very like hip crowd. Um, you're seeing it a lot for people who are going on vacation or want to lay out by the pool. If you're planning a day out at the beach but have school all morning, try pairing a casual cover-up over your swimsuit. We're seeing a lot of strapless that have the shorts attached um, and the cotton, of course, for a cover-up is great. It's lightweight when you're out in the sun. And what can we expect guys to wear on the land and water? Trends right now is the basic board shorts. Either you can go with uh, basic like bright colors or solid contemporary colors. Besides bikinis and flip-flops, hair and accessories are other hot trends for this summer. Side swoop bangs, that's the most popular right now. And there's the straight across fashion bangs. Clip in flowers that are really cute. People wear them just to kind of dress up their outfit a little bit more, give it that summer look. And what good styles are in to cover our eyes? The Wayfair look and the aviator. Now, before you kick it this summer, you have a heads up on how to stand out at the beach. This is Gretchen Gerardo with your fashion first. I can't wait for summer so I can go to the beach. We're going to take a short break, but when we come back, we'll talk about crime and safety at the beach, and then check in with Alex Russo and her studio guests. 80, 30, 50. Every mile brings us closer. 25. Every mile in a city near you. 75. 
Help us stop diabetes. 100. Join the Tour de Cure. 60. Register to ride. 36. Or sponsor a rider. 50. Call 1-888-DIABETES or visit us online at diabetes.org forward slash tour. How many miles will you ride? 25. Welcome back. An attack on the CSULB campus has sparked several concerns over the safety of the community. Holly Silverman reports. A student was attacked in a bathroom on the Cal State Long Beach campus, but it would be nearly a week before the public found out. Uh, everyone was saying it's because it was a transgender kid that that's why it was kind of hush-hush. After the crime alert was released, there were many strong opinions. Some question whether the crime actually occurred. Others criticize the response of the police and the university. It brings up so many implications about where we are in 2010 and what people are saying they're like calling it a hoax now. After speaking with the victim I know it's not a hoax. McGee is a friend and colleague of the victim. He is also the co-director of the Orange County Transgender Coalition. I was shocked um, as a student, longtime student on the Cal State Long Beach campus. Cole Carpenter, a transgender graduate student, was attacked inside the men's room of the KJAZ building on April 15th. While Carpenter did not know his attacker, they obviously knew him. And the suspect knew him, he called him by name as reported, and um, he threw his shirt over his head, pushed him against the wall and slashed his chest. The trans community is even more at risk. They represent a disproportionate amount of uh, the victims who are targeted out of um, all hate crime victims. Therapist Lisa Morell helps her patients deal with issues of gender identity and nonconformity. We come from a system you know, socially and culturally that really enforces, you know, your boy or your girl, and if you're boy, you're this, and if you're girl, you're that. The gender piece is really at the core of a person's identity, um, and it's something that is not based on behavior, it's who you are. University police crime statistics indicate that this is the first gender-based hate crime on campus. The police declined to be interviewed. They have released a sketch of the suspect who has not yet been arrested. That makes me very uncomfortable and very nervous to know that this person is still out there and we don't know what he's capable of doing. For Campus Connection, I'm Holly Silverman. I know I'll be more aware of my surroundings. We all know how scary it can be to walk to your car at night. Reporter Alex Russo has more on the night escort program. Cal State Long Beach is overall a safe campus. The university even has its own police station. However, crime is still an issue on campus. In 2006, the university experienced four sexual assaults and three aggravated assaults. The following year, Long Beach State had four sexual assaults and two aggravated assaults, all of which took place on campus. Campus safety is always a primary concern here at Cal State Long Beach. To ensure the safety of faculty, staff, and students, the university police started the night escort program. The night escort program is when the CSO officers, like the one you see behind me, take people from their class to their cars when the sun goes down. Tracy Greninger, a student at CSULB, tells us about her experience using the night escort program. After my COM 300 class, it was a 7 to 945 class, and they just happened to be stationed right outside uh, our classroom. So we jumped on the little golf cart a couple times and took us right to our car. The community service officers answer calls for escorts and they provide additional crime prevention patrols to parking lots, buildings, and residential life facilities. Another Long Beach State student, Ashley Covert, has never used the night escort program but thinks it's a great program to keep people safe. It makes it safer by having them offer you to take you to your car at night so you're not like a young woman walking around to your car by yourself. Ashley's also considering using the night escort program in the future. If I take a night class, yeah, I would definitely use it. The community service officers can be identified wearing black shirts with university police and community service officer lettering with photograph identification name badges. Tracy recommends the night escort program for students in the future. It's a good service and it's there and we technically pay for it through our tuition, I think, so why not use it? The night escort program runs Sunday through Thursday from 6 p.m. until 11 p.m. and Friday and Saturday from 4.30 p.m. until 9.30 p.m. For Campus Connection, I'm Alex Russo. We're excited to welcome to the studio Long Beach State student Tracy Greninger to tell us about her experience with the night escort program. 
Thank you, Andy and Tanya. Today, we have Tracy Greninger here to talk to us about campus safety in the night escort program. Welcome, Tracy. Thanks, Alex. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. I'm just going to ask you a few questions about safety on campus and about the night escort program, which I know you've used before, correct? Yes, I have a few times. So what do you think about safety on Long Beach safety? state's campus. Do you think it's a safe campus overall? Uh, yeah, I think as far as universities go, um, I think it is a pretty safe place. You just hear about isolated events here and there, but big picture, I think it's a pretty safe place to be. Do you think the police do a good job of patrolling the area? Because we have our own police department on campus. Right. I see them here and there in the parking lots and whatnot. I never really see them on foot much. Um, there's a couple segways running around, I think, but I do see them um, but I've never lived on campus, so I can't really speak on behalf of people who actually live here. And you're a senior, correct? Yes, I am a fifth year senior. So you've been here for five years. Do you think that camp the campus has gotten safer since you first started here or that it's gotten worse? Well, I think for a while every everything was going really, really well as far as safety went. I think we had a, uh, an incident happen a couple weeks ago, but that was the first I had heard of in a couple years. So up to that point, I think we were doing pretty good. Yeah. Have you ever had any night classes here on campus? I have. I took a communications class at night. And did you ever feel unsafe walking from your car to class and back? Well, I had friends in my classes, and we always made it a point to walk together to our cars. I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't walk by myself, so we would walk together, or a couple times we did take the CS. CSO service. And so you took the night escort mm -hmm. program with the CSO offers and everything. Can you tell me a little bit about your experience with that? Uh, it's pretty easy. You just kind of have to sit around a couple minutes, wait for the van or the golf cart to fill up, and you just sign a little paper that says your name and the time, and um, they drop you right off of your car and make sure you get in, and it's it gives you a little feeling of comfort. Um, do you think, do you feel that you're safer on campus knowing they're around. Yeah, I think even if even if they're not fighting crime, I think that it might deter someone who it keeps honest people honest. Perfect. Uh, do you re recommend it for any students who haven't used it, who are maybe apprehensive to use the night escort program? Yeah, because I think that you can maybe get better classes at night, but people don't take them because it's night. So if you if they know that that service is available, then they'll do that. Well, thank you, Tracy, for being here today. Thanks for having me. Back to you, Andy and Tanya. When we come back, we'll check out Long Beach State's star basketball player and take a look at how gang violence brought the Long Beach community together. My wife's drinking really made things difficult for me. I had to work hard just to keep everything normal. My EAP counselor at work sent me to Al-Anon family groups. I didn't think I needed to go, but it turned out to be great advice. Are you troubled by someone's drinking? You might be surprised at what you could learn in an Al-Anon family group meeting from people just like you. Call 1-888-4-AL-ANON. Violence off campus is also a big issue. Asami Suwabi reports how community members got together for a peace rally. Dozens of students, volunteers, and community members marched in memory of those killed by gang violence during the first annual Peace for Long Beach rally. But I'm really happy that we finally got our act together as Long Beach community. Um, we needed to have this a while ago. We have had way too much, especially in this particular neighborhood. I live down here, so it's great to know that we're getting together as a community. Um, we have a lot of students here, but it turns out we actually have tons of random community members and adults. The march was a part of the event to advocate for peace and raise awareness of youth violence in Long Beach. In workshops at Cesar Chavez Elementary School, Participants shared experiences and feelings about gang violence. My brother was actually killed in gang violence about five years ago. The police reported 40 murders in 2009, half of them related to gang violence. One of the victims is a Wilson High School student, Melody Ross. Peace for Long Beach was organized after her tragic death on the campus. 
the 16-year-old student was shot and killed while leaving a homecoming game on October 30th. Wilson High School math teacher Carrie Bertrand started planning peace for Long Beach with her younger cousin so after Wilson's death. We started talking, coming up with some ideas on what we can do to make Wilson, and not only Wilson, but all the high schools in Long Beach, a safer um, environment and campus to go on to. It took only three and a half months to make it happen after Beltran and other members of Peace for Long Beach Committee started their weekly meetings. She says she feels a personal responsibility to advocate for the youth of Long Beach. Because there's really not a lot of good representation. There, I know that there's really not that many role models out these days that are doing the right thing. And Peace for Long Beach is her way of showing young people how to stand up against violence and do the right thing. Reporting for Campus Connection, I'm Asami Suabe. Long Beach State Guard Karina Figueroa made her debut as a Los Angeles Spark in the Walter Pyramid. Isis Roberts has more on her success story. It's no secret that Karina Figueroa had a remarkable career at Long Beach State. She was definitely the Michael Jordan of the team. I actually started watching her in high school and she was like my role model, so coming here to play with her was like an incredible experience for me. During her senior year at the beach, Figueroa averaged 17.8 points, 5.5 assists, and 4.8 rebounds per game. She was also selected all Big West first team. She's tough. Um, she's a competitor. She's probably one of the fiercest competitors I've ever coached. That fierce competitiveness captured the attention of WNBA scouts. In early April, Figueroa was invited to participate in a pre-draft training camp. After playing well in the camp, Figueroa's agent said there was a good chance she could get drafted in the third round. So my brother and I were just watching it at home and we're just on the couch, you know. Normally we, we lay back, whatever, but no, I was, I was right on my knees like, okay, let's see if I can get picked up, you know. And so I didn't, unfortunately, but my agent called me right, like two minutes right after draft ended. And Figueroa's agent called to say that the Los Angeles Sparks wanted her to attend their team's training camp. Ironically, the Sparks had already scheduled a preseason game right here in the Pyramid, where Figueroa played her whole college career. How great would it be to play in front of your friends and family? Figueroa was definitely welcomed by several friends, fans, and family members as she made a return back to Walter Pyramid. So we've got like 40 people on our side cheering for her. It's, it's amazing. Like We're so excited for her. In her second preseason game with the Sparks, Figueroa played 10 minutes but was held scoreless in an 0-for-3 shooting day. But Figueroa did show a great defensive effort along with two rebounds. I feel like I played... Um, you know, with, with emotion, with heart, and, and that's really all I can give. After the game, Sparks head coach Jennifer Gillum talked about Figueroa's play since she started training camp. She's been hanging in there. She's been battling. I, I love her attitude. Thanks, Isis. Up next, we are going to hear more about the new tax on cannabis and college grads and the job market. Hi, I'm Rochelle Lefebvre, and this is Johnny. We're working with Best Friends Animal Society to stop the suffering of millions of breeding dogs in puppy mills who supply puppies to pet stores. You can help too, by not adding to the demand for pet store puppies. When searching for your next best friend, do what I did. Adopt. Don't shop. <laughs> Let a shelter dog like Johnny steal your heart. Welcome back. Our next guest is here to tell us more about the multicultural show. Ina Williams is here to talk with Campus Connections' Jackie Aguirre. Thank you, Tanya and Andy. We're here today with Ina Williams, the advisor to the International Students Association. Thank you for being here, Ina. Thanks for having me. How are you today? I'm really great. Good. Well, today we're going to be talking about the 44th annual multicultural dinner show that just occurred. Can you tell us a little bit about the dinner show and a little bit about International Student Association, what their role is on campus? Well, the International Student Association started up at least 44 years ago, but actually before that. They've been recognized officially since 44 years ago by the SLD office. Um, they start up primarily to kind of give international students a venue to get to know one another because we're a huge campus. And then they included more domestic students later to kind of help the international students get to know the students that are here from the United States. Um, the dinner show itself started up 
just because there's so many cultures that started to in, just come into the campus, they wanted to create a venue to share their cultures with everyone here at the campus. So the very first show was actually a fair, and then they changed it to a show to incorporate the community here in Long Beach as well as the campus community. Wow, what a great way to be in the community together. Mm -hmm. that's, that's great. Can you tell us how um, the show came to arise with the idea, who came up with the idea? I don't know the original person, but we did meet one of the original ISA members just randomly. We were at a Qingdao Sister City Association <laughs> dinner, and she said, hey, I did the very first show. So she told us kind of how it came about. They um, used a church as a venue, a community wow. church, huge. They had sold out event. They all cooked the food back then because there were no liability <laughs> issues. And uh, that was kind of the start. That was back in the 70s, and it's been going on ever since. Um, we wish that we could kind of create that again where we could bring in food that the students cook themselves, but just due to the different kinds of regulations right. nowadays, we can't do that anymore. Right. Well, the yeah. food was good anyways. Great. The show is an absolute hit. I went. Um, can you tell us about how many people ended up showing up to the event and if you, that actually ended up fitting your guys' um, uh, did that end up surprising you guys or was it as many as you thought would show up? We actually were expecting a few more, but we thought there might be some some limitations right. due to the fact that we have some budget situations, such right. as a furlough. We weren't expecting a furlough day right before, so our Friday ended up being almost like a Saturday. We could have just had it on the weekend anyway. <laughs> um, but we did have quite a few, about 200 people showed up. We had space for maybe around 256, oh, wow. um, but we had sponsors that sponsored a full table as well as just individuals buying tickets. And everyone that came just seemed like they were having a great time, so we are just happy it went off with, without a hitch. So do you guys have any plans for the event next year? The main thing we try to do is keep it upbeat, fun, and different every year. So we want to diversify every time as much as possible. So we want to reach out to all the other cultural groups on campus and really invite them to be involved. So we hope that we can reach out to them through some of the positions there in ISA and maybe get some different types of performances, dancing, singing, um, other cultures we're maybe not as familiar with. So looking That's a great to it. plan. That sounds like it's going to be a fun event next I year. I so. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Ine, for being here with me today. Thanks. Back to you, Tanya and Andy. Thanks, Jackie. Californians will decide in the upcoming November election if the government should be taxing marijuana. Andy Garcia has the story. Lighting up may be the answer to jumpstart California's struggling economy. The Tax Cannabis Act is gaining much attention from advocates for legalization. Medical marijuana users like Brad Parker support the idea behind regulating and taxing marijuana to help get California back on its feet. I'm really looking forward to the uh, Tax Cannabis Act being passed this November. Um, I can walk down the street without feeling like I'm a criminal. More importantly, as a banker, it's definitely what California needs to help stimulate the economy. The Tax Cannabis Act of 2010 was introduced last year as Assembly Bill 390. If passed, adults 21 and over can possess a small amount of marijuana and it will be regulated in the same way as alcohol, according to the Tax Cannabis website. Legislature will also be able to adopt a statewide regulatory system for a commercial cannabis industry. If it's passed and there's not a big backlash and there's just money rolling in, then they're not going to have a problem, you know, and that's what it's all about. Sam Vakovic is a graduate student within the Criminal Justice Department. My thesis was on medical marijuana and I just did a content analysis of newspaper articles from across the country. Just kind of saw how, how they covered medical marijuana in the news and kind of the conclusions we got was overall it was positive. However, those opposing the initiative have created an organized group to keep the drug from being a source of income for the state. This is not about health, it's not about taxes. It's not about a better economy, it's not about schools, it's not about education. It's just about a, a hippie movement of people who just want to get high. Alexandra Daytig moderates web pages that share the negative aspects of cannabis use and want to make sure that the act is not approved. You know, it's, it's against federal law to profit off of drug sales, so I'm not sure how that whole tax thing there is working. If the Tax Cannabis Act is not approved in the upcoming election, supporters like Brad Parker will continue the fight for legalization. To find out more information on the initiative, you can visit www.taxcannabis.org. For Campus Connection, I'm Andy Garcia. Bills, rent, and of course, jobs. That's only a few elements of being an adult. But in this economy, getting a job is harder than it used to be. Tanya Larson has the scoop on what our future graduates should do. <laughs> With graduation just around the corner, many seniors are getting anxious to walk across that commencement stage. 
I'm so excited about graduating. Seriously, for well, not four years, five years, I'm just so excited to be walking across that stage. <laughs> but with the excitement of graduation, the reality of the real world starts to set in, and the biggest challenge recent graduates face is getting a job. I'm scared I won't find a job. <laughs> I'm scared of not making ends meet once I graduate. You know, you're not going to be a student anymore. According to the National Association of Colleges and Employers, there will be a record number of graduates entering the workforce. Cal State Long Beach will graduate over 8,000 students alone, a record for the school. Unfortunately, the annual job forecast by CareerBuilder.com says only 44% of employers plan to hire recent college grads. Compare that to 79% in 2007. Well, what's the point of going to college if they're not going to hire you? Like doesn't make any sense. I mean, they tell us to go to college because you need a degree, but if they're not even going to call it, like, you know, hire college grads, then what's the point? Now, there are ways to get noticed by employers. The director of the Career Development Center, Manuel Perez, says internships are important to have, as well as a certain set of skills. You have to learn how to network. You have to learn how to properly conduct a job search, how to interview, how to present yourself both you know, on your resume as well as verbally. This competitive job market has even led some graduates to go back to school. In a way, students are almost safer being in school than out job hunting. Graduate school is a viable option right now. We, we see more students wanting to go to the grad school, obviously because of the economy. So where are the jobs for recent college grads? Business Week magazine found the best markets based on starting salaries and the number of employees under the age of 30 with bachelor's degrees. The list includes the airline industry in Minnesota, broadcasting in New York, banking in Utah, and hospitals in Nevada. Unfortunately, California did not have any markets that made that list. This is Tanya Larson reporting for Campus Connection. Thank you, Tanya. And thank you for tuning in to another edition of Campus Connection. I'm Andy Garcia. And I'm Tanya Larson. Thanks for watching.